Yeah, um, dear friends, uh, Monday evening, prime time. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you all to another Olympus Symposium here during the virtual ERS. And it's my pleasure to spend the next one and a half hour together with Stefano Gasparini. I think Stefano Gasparini is well known. Everybody knows him. Um, and we will talk about small nodules in the lung, what we can do with those nodules. And uh, in the second part, it's our great pleasure and also an honor to show you something completely new. Um, we're changing the world of bronchoscopy with the new techniques we will have in our hand in the future. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Felix Hürs. I'm from Heidelberg, Germany. And um, like Stefano, I think I'm able to handle a bronchoscope. Um, and due to that, I have a lot of conflicts because I'm a well-paid speaker. Um, uh, therefore, these are my conflicts. So let's talk about interventional pulmonology and our possibilities to diagnose lung cancer. And um, I'll just show you here the data from the US because they're always a little bit ahead of us and they always come up at the beginning of the year with a forecast, what happens to cancer, the, the American cancer statistics. And what you see regarding the number but also regarding the estimated uh, death rate, uh, lung cancer is leading by males as well as females. So we have to diagnose a lot of cancer. We have to stage a lot of cancer. But at the end of the day, we are losing most of our patients due to the disease they are suffering on. And uh, we also knowing that uh, when the patient is lucky, we detecting the cancer at an earlier stage. Um, you see here two CAT scans of patients having had cuff, receiving an X-ray, receiving a CAT scan, and both have had nodules. And um, the idea from a patient when he presents himself to an expert is, that he wants to have the diagnosis out of that image. But we knowing that we cannot forecast the histology of a nodule based on the image we have in front of us. So we need a diagnosis. For example, on, the, on your right side, it's a malignant disease. On your left side, it's a benign disease, completely different story from a patient perspective, but we need histology. And due to the reason that we have more and more data, we have to accept that the little lesions we seeing in the CAT scans will become smaller and smaller in the future because lung cancer screening will be established worldwide in the US. It's already there. It's reimbursed in specific settings. In Germany, we are in debate with the insurance system. And I'm relatively sure that we have some cancer screening programs beginning in next year. Italy have a lot of trials published. The UK is debating that. Um, and when we doing CAT scans in a population which is on risk based on smoking and age, we will find nodules. We will find small nodules. And we have to diagnose those nodules. Um, in that uh, table, you see the data from all the national and international lung cancer screening trials, which, ha which have been published. And you see that the majority of those patients detected by lung cancer screening programs are detected in stage 1A or 1B. That means for us as interventional pulmonologists, we have to deal with smaller lesions. And uh, you see the mean cancer size in all those trials have been 1.3 centimeters. So we have to work on technologies that we are able to reach those little lesions to diagnose them, to decide what 
is the underlying disease and what is the treatment option for those patients. Having access with the bronchoscope to those lesions, it's not really new. This is the picture from the first publication uh, written by a Japanese colleague about fluoroscopy guided transplant lung biopsy more than 50 years ago. And what that group published is that the technique is quite good when the lesion is big. When you have smaller lesions, especially lesions below three centimeters, the yield is dropping down. So published 100 years before that the classical transponchal biopsy fluoroscopy guided is not the best technology we have. And since that time, we published multiple papers. And even my famous co-speaker, Stefano Gasparini, published uh, not 100 years before, but 30 years before, he published his experience. And he published, when you go for smaller lesions, your yield is dropping down. And that has been reported multiple times. So we have to accept that fluoroscopy guided transplant lung biopsy, what the most of us are doing, is not the best technique to really diagnose smaller lesions. But we have to deal with the smaller lesions, so this is the issue. So what is the need for us. So we need a better access to those lesions. Therefore, we need navigation, we need confirmation, and then we have to biopsy those lesions. And um, for all of you who don't know where those nodules will be, this is the distribution of the Nelson trial. This was a large um, trial in the Netherlands and the Belgium area, the Benelux area about lung cancer screening. And these are all the cancer lesions they found, and they are clearly in the outer sphere. So we need a navigation and we need confirmation technologies to bring our scope to the lesion that we can biopsy them. There are a lot of techniques described. Uh, there have been a couple of publications that you can go with your whole equipment in the, in the radiological lab. You do it CT guided. Uh, Super tricky, a lot of logistical challenges behind. And uh, I'm relatively sure when you ask your radiologist, can I have your CAT scan for a CT guided bronchoscopy, he offers you a CT guided interventional radiology procedure, so a CT guided fine needle aspiration. Um, you can use the CAT scan and uh, create a virtual reality. You can do that then with the bronchoscope and virtual reality. You can go every, you can use different guidance systems, or you can also use the endobronchial ultra system, the radial system to guide your scope in the right direction. Every technique has pros and cons. Um, and um, it seems that we have to combine the radial e with a navigation system to really get access to those lesions. What we are mostly using is the CAT scan. And with the CAT scan we have, which the patient brought us, we using software solutions to get a navigation support during the bronchoscopy. There are multiple companies on the market. And I just show you one example of the system we are using, where you have on your one screen, the real-time image on the other screen, the virtual reality, you can get a track overlay in your endo image that you really know which of the different branches you should follow. And then you also have the target overlaid into uh, the real-time image and you know where to take the biopsy. So such navigation systems are there. Such navigation systems, you have to invest in the computer and the software, but that's it. You don't have the need for additional disposables. For sure, there are other techniques around. There is the transparent nodal access. There are the robotic system. There are papers published, uh, paper presented, showing that we have quite a good yield in small lesion. But what is missing is still the evidence for those systems. And you can be sure that when you invest in such a system, you have to spend a lot of money to get it. And then you have the money you have to spend in the disposables. So therefore, you need cash to use those systems. And the question will be, 
how good is the evidence, how good will be the reimbursement that you really can use those technologies. But therefore, we have to publish data that we really can quote how good the system is. So what is established in the meanwhile is the radial EBUS as a confirmation technology. Radial EBUS has the disadvantage that you cannot steer it really. Um, but when you use a virtual reality, small scopes, bring the, the scope in the direction of the lesion, you just can put the EBUS probe with guide sheet or without guide sheet, depending to the working channel of your scope. And then you can confirm that you are really in the lesion. Uh, you know those images, when you are missing the solid mass, then you get that snowstorm image, only the artifacts of the air. When you are in the center of the lesion, then you know you are in. You hit the lesion and then you are sure that when you take the biopsy that you really have enough material from the lesion to establish the diagnosis. And even therefore, it's a busy slide, but I just copy that of a recent publication from David Ost's group. This is the evidence for the radial EBOS and you see you always bring it on a higher sensitivity level when you use the radial EBOS um, as a confirmation tool. So therefore, we here in Heidelberg, we don't do any biopsies anymore in the peripheral lung without the confirmation of the radial EBOS. It's quick, it's easy, and it's cheap because you can uh, reuse those props. We also know that all the fancy technologies we have access to have limitations. We knowing that when you see in the CAT scan a bronco sign, we have a higher yield, we have a yield size dependent. We knowing luckily being in Europe, seeing more solid lesions, solid are better to biopsies than GGOs. And we also knowing that Depending to the radial EBUS image, you have a forecast if you hit the lesion or if you don't hit the lesion. So just try to get really access to the middle of the lesion, then you have a higher yield of the biopsy. And what is more and more common is also the ultrasound bronchoscope. Especially the sponsor of the evening brings us, immer, it brings us better and better scopes with um, smaller and smaller diameters and luckily bigger and bigger working channels. So therefore we can bring our scope with the help of virtual navigation support close to the lesion, confirming the lesion by the EBUS and then we taking a biopsy. This is all the data, what you can achieve when you use ultrasound bronchoscope with the help of virtual reality. And then when you are there, then you have to take a biopsy and the question will be, should we only go for forceps? Should we combining forceps and needle? This is something for sure Stefano is preferring or should we go for the cryobiopsy? So when you are at the spot, then you have to decide how to diagnose everything. So summarizing a little bit the, the problem, uh, we will see in the near future more and more of those nodules lung cancer screening, secondary round of lung cancer, and even metastatic disease in the lungs will be our challenge. We need better guidance system. Uh, and I think the virtual reality is something which will help us and is payable. And then we need the radial EBUS as the gold standard for confirmation. And personally, I believe at the moment we're talking about diagnosing but I'm relatively sure when we have access to those lesions that we will start soon with the endoscopic treatment options, especially in non-surgical candidates. So I'm relatively sure solitary pulmonary nodules are the upcoming business for the field of interventional pulmonology. And I'm relatively sure Olympus offers us a lot of solutions to biopsy those lesions and maybe also to treat those lesions. So that was the short intro to the nodule and the nodule business. And now it's up to Stefano to show you the details what we are doing. Mm -hmm.